It's a beautiful September afternoon. I'm out with Annie. And uh, what we're talking about today is how to encourage your dog to uh, hold a retrieving item a little bit more steadily, to be a little bit more patient in the delivery. Okay. Uh, people are all the time emailing me and they're asking me questions about how I teach the inductive retrieve. Okay. The first thing I want you guys to understand is that, uh, you know, it's never really a great idea to try to copy uh, another dog trainer's exact technique because uh, we're all individuals and all our dogs are individuals. And so the specific techniques, eh, they change from person to person, from, from situation to situation. But the concepts, the underlying concepts, they don't change. Okay. So if you want to teach a, a good inductive retrieve, you know, teach a dog to have a nice steady hold and delivery, first thing you have to do is establish a good basic obedience foundation. Around here, we work on a concept called pattern overlayment. Okay. So the very first thing I do with my puppies is I teach them a super strong basic obedience foundation. Okay. And then whenever I want to introduce a new and novel concept to them, I just overlay the new pattern on top of the old pattern. So for example, Annie and the other dogs that come here for training, they all learned this uh, obedience pattern very early in life. And then I kind of play fetch with them and get them used to, uh, you know, picking up retrieving items. And then I just start to bring the retrieving item onto the course with us. And I will introduce the retrieving item at a random point in the course. And then I'll just kind of pick up my pace and I will move to a natural pause point in the course. And without the dog even realizing it, they have walked a considerable distance. And since they're focused on the course and they're so familiar with the base pattern, they don't think about spitting the, the dumbbell out. They don't think about mouthing it and chewing it and stuff like that, okay? Uh, it's really a unique and subtle approach to uh, solving an age-old problem. What used to happen, or what still happens in a lot of circles, is uh, you know people will give the retrieving item to the dog, okay? And then if the dog drops the retrieving item, the dog is in trouble until it picks it back up. Well, you can see where maybe that works, but also where a lot of the time you're just going to create friction, right? Because, you know, usually if the dog drops the retrieving item, it's because it considers the retrieving item a little uncomfortable. It's not properly, you know, been acclimated to the retrieving item, doesn't have enough attention span, you know, and so it's looking off in the distance. And then if you go to fussing at it, well, I mean, it just ends up like wanting to drop the retrieving item more because all of those things are still in play. Plus, the dog's got in trouble and being in trouble makes the dog uh, uncomfortable and uncomfortable dogs don't like to carry things in their mouths. Wait. Okay. With this approach, I'm taking something and I'm saying, hey, you know what? Like having that retrieving item always leads to something good. The dog's like, yeah, I like having the retrieving item in my mouth. And I'm like, well, here, take it for a second. And I'm like, oh, shoot. We got to go ahead and uh, finish part of this pattern and get to a pause point. And the dog's like, oh, that makes sense, Tony. I've been at that same pause point a million times. So the distance between where the dog takes the retrieving item and the pause point, I can manipulate that based on, you know, the, the dog's progress. And before you know it, like the dog is just carrying the retrieving item pretty much as far as you want them to, 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 to carry it out of habit, okay? Everything in dog training ultimately boils down to habit, guys. If you're still having to use your food with an adult dog or whatever kind of collar apparatus you have with an adult dog, you didn't, you didn't establish a good foundation. If you want a steady hold, build it on a solid basic obedience foundation. And if you do it, like it might take you a long time to get it, to kind of get it to where the, the dog carries the retrieving item the distance that makes you happy, okay? But once you get it, you're done. And you don't have to fade away from, uh, you know, a, a certain leash and collar set up. You don't have to fade away from, you know, a remote collar set up. The dog just gets in the habit of, uh, you know, engaging in familiar patterns. So, like with this dog, we started this when she was a puppy. You can go back and watch on YouTube. Uh, we did it you know, for a long time. Uh, you can, and you can watch, she used to carry the dumbbell three or four feet and then eight or 10 feet and then 20 feet and then 30 feet and then 40 feet. And now she'll pretty much carry the dumbbell uh, wherever I want to. And I don't actually have to give her these rewards anymore, but uh, she likes them and I like giving them. So, you know, what's the big deal? And all it takes is a nice basic obedience foundation. Okay. And a dog that likes to fetch and a dog that understands where the pause and reward points in a given pattern are. Ultimately, 
I, I just, uh, I really can't understand why anybody would teach this any other way. <laughs> Very nice. All right. I'll see you guys next week.